Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Mono White Tokens. What is going on, everybody? And welcome to a giant pile of jank. Yes, today is going to be an interesting one. This is a deck that I have created that I think is really fun um, and not very good, but we're going to have a blast with it. It is mono white. It is token based, uh, but it's also kind of an anthem based deck. And we'll, we'll kind of talk about that as we go through. Uh, the idea behind this came from another deck that I saw, and I apologize because I don't remember who it was, who, who created it, but it was a dramatic finale deck. Uh, which is a great anthem card for uh, for tokens, but it's also really good at uh, kind of evening the playing field against a lot of the control decks who are sweeping the board. Because when any non-token creature you control dies, you actually get a two-one with flying. Uh, it can only trigger once each turn. I get it, but it is a really powerful ability, uh, and obviously very good in a token strategy where you're planning to kind of lord up all of your tokens to to punch in for a lot of damage. So. I built the deck around this idea uh, and then included a lot of really interesting sub themes that I'm hoping are really good. So the anthem effect is the big one. So we do have a number of other ways we can kind of anthem out uh, a lot of things. First of which we do have paladin class. We can level this up to give everything plus one plus one, which is nice, but it also protects us on the instant speed side of things because our opponent's spells cost one more to cast during our turn, uh, which is really, really good. It's also an enchantment with, which works extraordinarily well with Hallowed Haunting, uh, which is really nice. Uh, and then of course we do have the wedding announcement here, which is also a potential plus one plus one for our entire board. We can actually uh, utilize this very, very well in this list. Uh, and it of course also works well with Hallowed Haunting. So we do have a bit of an enchantment sub theme. It's not a massive theme, by any means but of course you're looking at paladin class we do have circle of confinement as the full four of uh as a big removal spell for the deck we've got the wedding announce announcement hollowed haunting dramatic finale and then sitting at the top rabble rousing which is our big payoff card uh being able to create basically double your board uh that's attacking in every turn is really good especially when they're all coming down with extra plus one plus one uh hits thanks to things like wedding announcement dramatic finale, all these kinds of cards. So uh, it's a really interesting way to kind of buff up the board really quickly. We do also have Intrepid Adversary, which we can also use as a pump up spell uh, later on in the game. We do create a lot of tokens. So I wanted to capitalize on the fact that we could gain a little bit of life and get out from under a lot of the burn or aggro decks, which Lunark Veteran helps us do. Usher of the Fallen is a great turn one play because it gives us the ability to boast very quickly, getting extra tokens out and hopefully taking advantage of that. Uh, a card I'm kind of trying out is Halo Fountain. Uh, I really like this card, funny enough. I think it's pretty good. Uh, it does everything you want in this deck, which is A, create tokens, untap your tokens as well, uh, B, draw some cards, and then technically it can win you the game. <laughs> uh, most of the time we get there before that, but obviously it's a good addition. Adeline's going to be able to throw out some uh, tokens as well and just be a big beefy creature. Uh, Fateful Absence for a little extra removal and then the Wandering Emperor to kind of play all parts for the deck. So it's a great addition here. Uh, we do get to play two Cave, two Seat of the Empire, and then I'm, I've got three Field of Ruin. I found that we've been up against a lot of control decks, which obviously run uh, a disproportional n number of the man lands usually uh, and so to be able to field of ruin and just kind of deal with those without actually having to burn a spell on it is pretty awesome so we're gonna try this uh don't expect a lot just gonna go ahead and say this is a jank deck to the max but it's gonna be a blast guys and i really hope you enjoy it let's go ahead let's jump into game one let's see how it does all right guys and here we are for game number one this is actually a pretty reasonable starting hand we definitely need some extra spells uh or excuse me lands but we actually have an interesting decision turn one here. I'm gonna go for the Usher. Uh, one thing that I've noticed is being able to just turn one this out, a lot of times means you're guaranteed at least a token uh, because most of the time, a lot of decks right now run tap lands, as you can see. And so it's a nice way to kind of guarantee we get an extra hit off of the, uh, the Usher here. Yes, we give up a little bit of life gain, but I think it's okay in this scenario. And so I'm actually pretty happy with this. Uh, fully expect that that is going to be a, um, a, uh, Doomscar. So, what we're gonna do is actually toss that out, go ahead, gain our life. I fully expect, again, they're probably gonna sweep the board, which is annoying, but fine. 
uh, because we can rebuild with the Lunark or the Luminous Phantom and we just have other stuff, of course, that we can play. So this is a pretty reasonable line of play in my opinion and we'll see what happens. Excellent. Uh, very interesting. So uh, now we've actually got quite a big decision. So we can, of course, just throw out the Adversary and plus up. Alternatively, we can Dramatic Finale, which I kind of like better. Uh, knowing that the the chances of them having a, uh, a doom scar is relatively high I feel like this is probably just the best bet um, so what do we want to do do we want to attack is I think the question I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no just in case I, I'm not sure technically I think we could have attacked in with the tokens but I don't think with these two we would have wanted to uh, if that makes sense um, and we'll see what they're actually up to this turn. They do have a tapped land. They have the exact Doom Scar mana, and we know they're running sweepers with the Ondo inversion. So this just seems like an obvious play at some point. Uh, but this is actually fine. So we're actually going to start to to really buff up our board here, I think. Um, and I will go ahead and do this. So uh, let's. Let's pump up one time, which does kind of get a lot of things into uh, perspective here. Let's go ahead and attack in with all of these. They can obviously kill the Usher of the Fallen. Not that worried about it, to be honest. Um, that seems like a bad block. Okay. I don't know why they wouldn't have blocked the Usher. I guess because they don't want the 2-1, maybe. Uh, but that leads me to believe they may not have Doomscar. We'll see. Uh, we will see, but I do think this is it. Okay, so they do have a Doom Scar. I thought so. Uh, so we do get a 3-2 in, uh, response to that, which is kind of nice. Um, because we have the Rabble Rousing, I'm gonna take a, a turn off here, uh, because we do want to, to gain some, uh, momentum with the Hollowed Haunting. So we're kind of setting ourselves up here. So we'll see how this actually works out, but, uh, I really like Hollowed Haunting. Um, and that will benefit from a land, basically. So if we get a land, we've got Rabble Rousing, we've got an extra creature token, which, there we go. Let's do this. I'm really curious as to what this deck actually is. Um, I don't know that it's well suited or not against what we're doing, to be brutally honest. Um, I'm gonna go for the wedding announcement here. One thing to note, we, we have some pretty high value spells in the deck, but we don't have like a ton. Uh, and so you're oftentimes going to get a medium card with the the uh, rabble rousing, which is perfectly fine. That seems bad. That seems like a really bad card, in general. Um, maybe not. I don't know. All right, that's fine. Cool. Uh, let's see what they do. They could sweep, and be perfectly fine in doing so, given that they've got uh, quite a number of other opportunities here. But we'll see. Okay. Interesting. Um, hmm. We can kind of do a little bit of everything here. So I'm going to Circle of Confinement, which is going to buff up our current token, which is green. It's also going to get this off of the field. Uh, we also then get to use Adeline, uh, which is great. And now they've only got one white mana available. My assumption is that's going to be used for the potion of healing. Yeah. Okay. Um, but now again, if they do decide to sweep, we actually get a creature in response. And you're seeing how powerful this deck can be. Now, obviously, again, they probably have a sweeper, but that's fine. We should be able to, uh, to manage regardless. Sure. Potion of healing on top of the restoration is a pretty sick little combo. Yep, so there it is, but again, we do have the protection and the fact that we have a dramatic finale, so they do still have to kill another card if they're going to be able to uh, really take advantage of this. Um, and again, we've got other stuff that's going to be able to come down here, which is nice. Hollowed Haunting, again. Hmm. That's certainly good. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we just go for the high value play here. Uh, maybe this is incorrect. I guess technically there's a a reason to go for multiple other different things, but I feel like this is pretty good. They can obviously kill this. That's fine. Fierce Retribution is a very interesting uh, card. That's uh, a 
An interesting choice, I will say. Uh, this seems like a really bad time to do this as well, um, because now we actually can just replay this. I don't know why they would have done that. Maybe just to shuffle their deck? I don't know. Did they need blue mana? Okay. Uh, well, we're going to do this. So again, just giving ourselves a little bit of protection against um, some potential plays the opponent might have. I guess they are five color. I'm so curious as to what this could be. Okay. Sick. I didn't even know that was in the graveyard. I'll be honest. Totally missed it. Uh, that's fine, though. I mean, it's really good, don't get me wrong, but it's not, like, game-ending good, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, I'm just going to throw this here. We'll get the attack for two in. This is going to give us another token. And we'll see what they do. So they are going to get us uh, here a little bit and that they're going to make us discard a card. Sure. That's fine. Um, and then they're going to have the Kami Dragon next turn. This is so fascinating. Um, this is actually kind of turning into a really good game. <laughs> I would love just any enchantment, truthfully. That would be kind of sick. Um, do we block? I think no. I think we get more, obviously, out of an attack with everything than they do, so that's unfortunate. Um, do we attack with everything? Yeah, I think we do. Uh, just to give ourselves as much as possible here, truthfully. What are these Fierce Retributions? Such an odd card. And why wouldn't they have... Well, they had to wait, I guess, till we were attacking. So sure, they're going to just kill all three of these. But we got four creatures in response, so it really doesn't matter. Okay. And we'll just drop the land since we don't have anything else. Unfortunately, we're getting a little flooded here. We do need some action to be able to like actually take over this game, and we're not so far. Um, this is fascinating that they're going for this. I should have known that they were doing five color uh, brilliant restoration, but I just didn't think about it. Okay. They've got so much life gain, it's insane. We're also just not lording anything. Uh, like we're not getting what we need to get. We're not gonna block, we're gonna take the three. No, come on, <laughs> no. Uh, that's so bad. It's really, really bad. Um, yeah, I think we just pass. I hate when people do that. Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, what does this do? Depending on player choose a non link, I return this card to your hand. <laughs> yeah, I'll give him a Doom Scar. <laughs> sure. Um, Alright, not much else we can do. I don't think we can win this at this point. That's one thing we don't have our sweepers, um, which not that we necessarily need them for this deck in general. <laughs> that would have been really helpful last turn. Um, unfortunately, as it stands, it's going to be relatively useless. Um, we might survive another turn. No, we won't because of that. All right, I'll good game them here. Let's go ahead and concede. Kind of unfortunate that we bricked so many times in a row because I think given the intrepid adversary, even potentially just a turn ago, we could have at least done a little more, but it's okay. Let's jump into uh, game two here. The brand new Reanimator Proxy Pack is now available through the end of July. If you'd like to pick up this month's amazing Proxy Pack, please visit patreon.com slash it resolves for details. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And while we do need a couple extra white sources, this is a reasonable keep. Uh, we can play most of the cards in our hand, and the Cave of the Frost Dragon is really going to help us out here. So let's go ahead and do this. Looks like Esper, probably Control slash Rafine, um, which is just going to be an annoying deck to be against. But we'll do the best we can. Okay, there's our second white source. I do like that. Um... There is a world where we Field of Ruin early, but obviously we can't do that right now anyway. So let's just go ahead. Let's do the easy 
obvious play. Um, this is nice because we will be able to get wedding announcement down, which of course just sets us up well for uh, future turns here. Um, kind of hope they do play Rafine. Okay, it's not. That's fine. So, we definitely play land. Um, there's a world where we just wedding announcement um, solely to either get the extra creature or uh, provide us with a card draw opportunity. Uh, alternatively, we could Circle of Confinement, then Usher, uh, just so we could get the attack in, um, but that is a little tricky. I think we go for it, though. This is a really good solution to Tenacious Underdog, solely because um, it, they can't blitz it from the graveyard. Um, so I'm actually pretty pretty okay with that play. Uh, as much as I would have loved to have gotten Wedding Announcement down that turn, um, you know, it, it is what it is. We'll see what the opponent's up to this turn. Meat Hook for one, sure. They sweep our board, uh, which is fine because we really only invested a handful of cards into our board, so it's not like we truthfully lost that much. Uh, and let's just go ahead and Wedding Announcement. They've got nothing on the board. Seems like a reasonable play. Um... We do need a couple extra lands here, so we're we're hurting for that a little bit, uh, but we'll see what we can do. Okay. An Usher. Not exactly what I was hoping for, <laughs> uh, but I will just play it out here, I think, and then probably just leave this up. I guess alternatively we could play this, but I kind of want to wait on that until we can Hollowed Haunting. Um, so yeah, I think we just do this. We'll get an extra token here, which is great. Uh, they may have a, okay. Uh, sure. Interesting, if we had played the Paladin class, I assume they would have just responded with the, the Vanishing Verse. Kind of surprised they didn't get the wedding announcement though. Kind of interesting. Um, so the question is, do we just not worry about this? And I actually am kind of okay to not worry about this. Um, I'll block one here with the Usher. Chances are we have other places we want to invest our mana this turn. Um, and so this is kind of more important in my view. This actually works out great because, uh, yeah. I'm just gonna go ahead and kill that. Uh, we don't anymore lose our Usher and they hit us for three, but we actually get to kind of get them here. Um, so that's kind of nice. Okay, uh, yeah, we're gonna use this as a refill opportunity, I believe. So let's all attack. Let's get the Wandering Emperor off the field. And then we just draw two cards and then flip one of the wedding announcements. Our own Wandering Emperor and a land. Land is good. Land is exactly what we want. Kind of interesting, we saw the reverse issue this time where we're just not getting lands and we had way too many the last game. So kind of unfortunate, but it's just the way it happens. It's all good. There is a Loth. Okay, cool. Uh, let's get the land down. Um, the easy play is truthfully just to exile the underdog uh, because then they obviously can't take advantage of it. Um, we can attack the Loth to kill the Loth. I kind of like that play. We could also lord up our creatures so they actually can't yeah, I, I think we go that route. Let's let's try this. I'm not sold that this is the best idea, but I'm kind of into it. Let's just attack all three here. They're obviously going to have a lot to swing back with, which is kind of fine. Oh, they're going to double block. Fascinating. Okay, they're going to have a lot less to swing back with. Uh, and cool, we got that off the field. Let's see what happens. Draw a couple extra cards. Love that. Or one extra card. Circle of Confinement is really good because, again, under with the underdog, we actually get to exile it without having to use the Wandering Emperor. And Kaito. Okay. We're slowly dwindling their resources. They are going to get some back with Kaito, obviously, but uh, we, we got some stuff to do. Okay, so. Um, most obvious play might just be the Wandering Emperor. 
Yeah, I think we're gonna do that. We'll see what happens. All right, let's go ahead. I'm gonna exile this. Get that off the field. And gaining a couple life there is actually pretty crucial. Um, all right. Let's see what happens. So we now have two four fours, which is huge because Kaito is at four. Um, we'll see what happens. Are they going to create their little 1-1? One, one? They could just blitz and uh, kill the Wandering Emperor. That's also a good option. Oh, they have their own. Okay. Well, that's cool. All right. You got it. And they've got an Aspirin. Okay, that's fine. And there's their 1-1. One, one. Okay, cool. Uh, interesting, they went for the Aspirin with that. That's interesting. Uh, okay, so... What's the best option? Um... We can Circle of Confinement, which will deal with one of their creatures. Uh, and I think we want that... to be the unblockable. And I think we want to Wedding Announcement. We can go ahead and plus this up. So this is going to get first strike plus an extra counter. And I think we want to kill Kaito uh, solely from the perspective of it's drawing them cards. And we can't really deal with the card advantage engine that they are producing. So I feel like that's probably just the best bet. Um, they can obviously, uh, I'm sure, deal with some of these tokens and stuff. But um, sure. Okay. That's kind of fine. We have plenty of other options with the Wandering Emperor to be able to kill whatever they decide to uh, attack with here. So, um, yeah, seems great. <laughs> I assume they plus up on the Wandering Emperor. They do have to consider the fact that we just have a lot of like good stuff. Um, wow, fascinating. Okay, that was interesting. They are going to draw a card here. And we do lose a life, which is scary. All right, so. Um, let's think about this. I think we're going to do this. Need to make sure we've got blockers here. Um, I think we then have to use our other Wandering Emperor to deal with this. Also gains us some life, which is really crucial. So we're back up to five. I do think we have to attack here. I, I think it gets a little too risky if we don't. We have another Ray. It's fascinating. Okay, so they kill our token. Annoying, not the end of the world. We get another 4-4 four, four here. Um, hmm. Oof. Okay. Don't love that. <laughs> For obvious reasons. Um, Alright, so this could be game ending. We'll see. We have to be aware of the fact that when this dies, or either of their creatures die, we actually do lose a life. So they can dive for 2. Okay. And they whiff on both of them. <laughs> well, that's great, because we just get to kill both of these then. <laughs> um, sick. So we are going to lose two life, like I said, in this little transaction here. But uh, that's fine-ish. Uh, we're down to three. All right, so we have a land. Hmm. All right, what's the best bet here? I think we counter up here. I think we do this because now this becomes a lethal attack, right? And uh, this isn't going to work, is it? Well, actually it might. We'll see. 
Yeah, we'll see. Um, wow, seriously? We won. But we didn't have to win. <laughs> they they could have blocked it. Um, okay, well, sick. We did it. We got a win. Unfortunately, these have been kind of long games, so we're going to have to cut it here, guys. Let's wrap this one up. All right, so how do we feel about the deck? Um, in general, I don't think it's very good, but it was really fun. <laughs> uh, I really like the idea of like taking a silly concept, like in this case, kind of overdoing the token theme and pushing it really, really hard to the max. And in this case, I think we did a pretty good job of building a deck that does function on some level. Uh, is it good? Probably not, um, but it was really fun to play. And truthfully, towards the end of a season, like a standard season, or once we get kind of settled in the meta, one of my favorite things to do is just take an idea or take a card and kind of build around it, uh, build out kind of a janky deck or style deck around it. Uh, and so I'm kind of, you'll, you'll notice the channel moving in that direction a little bit because Streets of New Cabana has obviously been out for a while. We know kind of where the meta has settled. Uh, and so I'm enjoying that process. It's really, really fun. Uh, and so I encourage you guys to do the same. If you want to, to take this deck as a shell and try it out for yourself, please do. I would love to see what you guys come up with. I hope you enjoyed this one. Leave a like, leave a comment down below. I love you guys very much. I'll see you again tomorrow for, for some more standard gameplay.